John C. Bogle, The Battle for the Soul of Capitalism. In his book, The Battle for the Soul of Capitalism, John C. Bogle delves into the ongoing culture war between two opposing forces in the United States. Proponents of free enterprise and those advocating for greater government control, often referred to as European statism. Bogle presents insights on these contrasting economic systems, while also outlining the history and foundations of America's free enterprise culture. In the book summary below, you will explore the opinions and sentiments of various demographics, learn about the complex relationship between politics and the economy, and examine the overarching arguments and counterarguments in this ongoing debate. America's Crossroads In the book, America's Crossroads, the author explores the two competing visions of America's future in the aftermath of the 2008-2009 economic crisis. On one hand, the free enterprise system offers individual freedom, encourages industry, and celebrates liberty while keeping government at bay. On the other hand, the creeping, European statism represents bloated government, nationalized companies, and increasing income distribution. The two systems cannot coexist, and one side must emerge victorious in this new culture war. The author argues that entrepreneurship is the essence of the American dream and the purest expression of America's free enterprise culture. Americans have independently directed their economic lives through free enterprise. This sets Americans apart from Europeans and their social democracy, where competition is less valued. The author argues that entrepreneurship is in Americans' DNA, carried down by generations of immigrants who tend to be entrepreneurial. Overall, the book presents a compelling case for choosing a free enterprise system and celebrates the value of individual opportunity. Americans' Views on Capitalism and Socialism a Gallup poll revealed that 61% of Americans support capitalism and reject socialism, with older respondents being more negative about socialism. Although most Americans feel that their taxes are too high, they support taxing the rich but not at current rates. The majority believes in free enterprise and less government involvement, with around 30% supporting government solutions. African Americans, Hispanics, and individuals under 30 fall into this 30%. Republicans are also responsible for the shift in economic policies. Obama's Crisis Arguments This summary explores the five arguments presented by Obama during his presidency regarding the economic crisis. He blamed the government, claimed that the government had no idea how to fix it, insisted that homeowners were not mere victims, argued that government growth was necessary, and asserted that only the rich would be taxed. However, each of these arguments is countered by other perspectives. For example, Obama blamed the government for the crisis by arguing that Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac guaranteed subprime mortgages to unworthy borrowers. He also believed that Main Street Americans were partially responsible for the crisis because they did not walk away from bad investments. Furthermore, he argued for government growth and spending, insisting that the stimulus package would only be paid by the rich. Overall, Obama's arguments sparked debates and discussions about the government's role in economic crises. The Battle for Human Flourishing In the battle between free enterprise and state control, the focus should be on human flourishing, not materialism. The 30% minority fights for income equality, but the 70% majority needs to claim the moral high ground in defending free enterprise. The notion that money buys happiness is fundamentally materialistic, and studies show that earned success, not wealth, leads to happiness. The 30% group's emphasis on redistributing wealth through progressive taxation undermines the American dream of optimism, meaning, and control. Americans gain fulfillment and satisfaction from their work, and the focus should be on equal opportunity to achieve earned success, not a guarantee of accomplishment. To foster independence, the U.S. should temper government's power and restrain programs that take away citizens' control. The Battle for America's Soul America is facing a culture war in which the 30% minority seeks to redefine equality as equality of outcomes while the majority believes in equality of opportunity. 
the backlash has resulted in movements like the Tea Party. Free enterprise factions must focus on stimulating true prosperity through creating jobs and educating the poor instead of treating poverty with handouts. America's strengths make it a gift to the world, and it should not apologize for its global position. What matters most is principle, not political power. This political turmoil can pave the way for the triumph of free enterprise over redistributionist statism. As we've seen in the summary of John C. Bogle's The Battle for the Soul of Capitalism, the country stands divided between the majority who believe in free enterprise and the minority, who endorses greater government control. While the majority seeks to uphold and support the American dream, entrepreneurship, and the idea that hard work and perseverance can overcome disadvantages, the minority focuses on income redistribution and attempts to achieve equality of outcomes. The book serves as a rallying call for advocates of free enterprise to lay out the principles that ensure true prosperity and equal opportunities, acknowledging the reality that this battle is crucial to America's future. Bogle stresses its importance for generations to come, 